All right, uh, let's get started. And today, I think we're gonna finish most of the slides material. And also we're gonna do an in-class exercise of derivation of a different give sampler given what we um, talked about. And that could be useful practice for preparing for the midterm as well. Um, so that is just the, uh, yeah, the beginning part. And then what we are gonna do today, uh, like I said, just gonna talk through the rest of the lecture slides itself. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, introducing JAX. It's called, it's short for just another Gibbs sampler. It's a software that people wrote that you're able to um, do MCMC estimation much more uh, efficiently or easier. As you remember what we did uh, for the previous part, prior and posterior distributions for mean and standard deviation, we actually need to derive, right? What the full condition of posterior distributions are. And you actually have to code it using a loop and you need to make sure that like the steps are right and all that. So using JAX, just another Gibbs sampler, uh, can simplify the whole process. Um, you will see how you can use JAX and there are certain ways that you can write the JAX code. It is very gonna, it's gonna be very similar to what you're gonna look at the model and the prior specifications. So as long as you know what the model you're using and what the priors you're using, then yeah, JAX syntax will allow you to write them down in the particular way and then the MCNC estimation will be done for you. Um, so let's talk about it uh, one by one. So we're gonna introduce JAX, the software, how to install it, and also demonstrate the example of the mean and standard deviation case that we had uh, for the normal model. Uh, specifically, um, we're gonna use, so JAX is a software, so we actually have to download and install the software first to your computer. And then we're gonna use a package called RunJAX. So that's using R to call the JAX function so you can use everything through R. Okay, so JAX is a software. And then we're gonna use the R package run JAX to actually run it through R. And you will see that the syntax is gonna be very descriptive of the sampling model and the prior, like I said. So we're gonna look at how we can do that for the mean and standard deviation case. Um, in the link, uh, in the slide, if you have it, and, uh, and also on Moodle, I posted the link as well. Uh, you should be able to, uh, first of all, download JAX uh, at the link. It is clickable. So if you have it, uh, feel free to give it a try now or later. Um, but once you do it, note that I think they have different operating system options. So you should choose the one that works for your own. And once you install, uh, download and install, we should also go to R uh, to install and load this round JAX package. So like I said, JAX is software. Okay, so with that link, uh, you will be able to download the software and install it locally. And then we're also gonna use round JAX R package. So we're able to use everything through R. Okay, so it's the software and the package. And the RoundJax package, uh, as we know, you do install packages and then you load the library and then things should go through um, pretty quickly. All right, so let me show you uh, why we mean by using JAX is much more um, easy in a lot of ways. So this is the stuff that we did last time. If you remember, we assumed that the normal sampling model has unknown mean and unknown standard deviation. So we give uh, a joint prior, uh, which is independent prior from U and P. And then we have the sampling density and eventually we derive the full conditional posterior distributions, the first one for mu, the second one for phi, and then we wrote a big loop to, to make it run, okay? And of course, like I said, in this case, uh, you are uh, needed, you need to derive the full conditional posterior distributions to be the two equations at the end. And once you know what they are, you'll be able to code the Gibbs sampler accordingly could be uh, tedious in a lot of cases. Um, so if you want to use JAX to do it, like I said, the code is very descriptive of the sampling model and the prior distribution. So I put the sampling model, as we know, is the IID normal at the top. And then the two prior distributions, mu follows a normal and phi follows a gamma. And then look at the bottom part, which is the uh, main part actually of running using the JAX software uh, on R, is we have a model chunk and then we have a uh, prior chunk over here. Oops. So, so we have one chunk for the model, which is the sampling model, and then one chunk for the prior. Okay. So maybe take a moment. I want you to um, talk with the neighbors to see how you see that the code is being descriptive. Like I said, all the sampling density and the prior distribution according to what we have listed um, at the top. Okay. So. Below, we have two chunks. You can think about that. At the top, we have two chunks, one for the sampling density 
and one for um, the prior distributions. And you should also talk about like any kind of interesting finding of the way that we are writing this JAX code uh, at the bottom, according to what you understand. So let me pause. All right, um, any thoughts? Can we actually um, match what we are writing down uh, in the model string part compared to what we have in the dense, uh, sampling density and the prior part? Overall makes sense? The way that, yeah, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I see, yeah, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, uh, good question. So uh, as we know, usually when you write out the normal density, uh, there are two ways I think usually what you see uh, is either what we have over here, um, mu as the mean and sigma as the standard deviation. And the other day, I think, um, Nathaniel says that, well, more often uh, they have seen this way, which is uh, mu and sigma squared. So that's the variance. And uh, we introduce this phi mostly because it's easier to work with mathematically. So phi is deterministic once you know sigma. So one over sigma squared is phi. Uh, all of the derivation that we have done is on the phi, which we know if it's a gamma prior, then we know it's a gamma posterior or a gamma uh, for conditional posterior. So I know this could be a little bit confusing and you might have questions about how we write the code uh, down here as well. Um, so I think for us, it's really just trying to um, make sure that we know uh, sigma is the standard deviation, sigma square is the variance, and then phi, which is one over sigma square is the precision. And model wise, um, it's just easier to, to work with phi just because it's a gamma and then it's also a gamma for conditional posterior distribution. Yeah. Yeah, so related to that, you probably remember whenever we're uh, trying to derive everything about uh, a phi, we always write one over sigma square instead of sigma or sigma square because we're actually working with phi itself. Okay. So it is phi that you give the gamma prior and it's phi that you're able to derive the uh, posterior or the full condition of posterior to be a gamma as well. Uh, but they usually like take phi as a, 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 a parameter for mm -hmm. the phi norm. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, like phi norm takes phi as sigma. Yeah, exactly. So that could be one thing that I thought someone will raise. Uh, so if you look at the syntax, for, uh, so this is Jack syntax, okay? So what we're seeing over here is Jack syntax. And you see that, first of all, they use D, which is qu quite be a little bit different from what we usually understand in R, okay? So if you remember in the regular R, we have what, D norm, R norm, and then P norm and Q norm, okay? Yeah, so uh, they all have different functionalities. I think one, uh, one homework question is dealing with that and uh, I think homework two, which was due already and that was on beta, but nevertheless in R, you have this four different choices. Uh, in JAX in particular, if you're trying to specify the density, any density that you do, it usually just starts with D. Okay? So this D, um, I think you can think about it still as the density, uh, but in JAX, you don't really have any other, like the R norm, P norm and Q norm, because they don't really matter in those cases. Yeah, but the second part of uh, Shinji's question is, well, obviously in JAX, they take mu and they take the precision instead of anything else. Okay? So if I remind, uh, like, let's try to think about in R, when we do D norm, it is evaluated the density of a normal, right? So we plug in, like if I want to evaluate, I don't know, um, 1.5, let's just say the density value at 1.5, for a standard normal, what do I do? I type in 1.5 as the first input, and then I type in the mean, and I type in the standard deviation. Okay, so that's the style of R. But specifically, as you can see here, um, this is another reason, as you can see, that very often in Bayesian inference, uh, people deal with phi instead of sigma or sigma square. And that's why JAX actually has this particular way of writing out the, the density function. Okay, so I would say this is the first big difference. I would say we usually see uh, comparing JAX and, and um, regular R code. Okay. Anything else that you found interesting or maybe not so much, everything looks straightforward in the way that the JAX code is written? Or any other questions? 
clarification questions or just curiosity? I think it's interesting that they let you write. Oh, right. Yeah, uh, let me turn on the volume a little bit. Go ahead. Can you say I think it again? It's I think it's interesting they let you just write alpha and beta without Sorry. specifying uh, can you, can you, can you, Yeah, I can hear you, but very low. Let me see. Did I do anything wrong? Let me see here. Mm. Can you try it again? Um, can you hear me now? Uh, I can. can. Can you all hear, kind of? Yeah, can you, um, okay, let great. me see. Um, yeah, go ahead. I think it's interesting that they let you do this D gamma with alpha and beta. Like, we haven't specified what those are. Mm, I see. Okay, great question. So here, you see that we type in alpha and beta, whatever that is, but we are not typing all the values themselves yet. Okay, so this, uh, it is a, a preference, like say for me, I personally always like to, instead of writing down the actual values when we use, I want to write a generic function that I can reuse later as well. So for example, like here, well, mu, as we know, is actually being part of like the prior part and the fee as well. But then, of course, everything about mu zero, phi zero, and alpha and beta, it is something you're going to supply later, okay? Because that will be uh, determined by the actual priors that you're going to use. Um, so one way to do it, of course, um, is to write down those numbers exactly already in the model string, and then you don't need to pass those numbers in later. Uh, but alternatively, what we're doing over here is that we're actually just using those um, notation negatives, trying to follow how we write the model. And later on, we can pass those values in um, so that we don't we don't need to write the code every time that we are fitting a different model. Okay. An example that we have seen here, which is not about Jax, but if you remember last time when we were working on, I think this set of Jax, uh, not Jax, sorry, this set of code. If you remember the Gibbs sampler that we are looking at together, uh, as you can see, like, cause we're wrapping it up as a whole function. So remember whatever initial value and the prior values that we're using, everything is in this input. Right, so we can pass the input later on, as you wish, um, but then eventually, um, in this way, this function itself can be reused multiple times if you're using a different data set and everything. Okay, so this is related to uh, what Nathaniel was talking about uh, for the JEX, uh, but again, it could be, like I said, a personal preference, and of course, you don't need to follow exactly what we showed over here, um, but to answer that question, um, you could write down those values directly as actual values, or you can use those, um, I guess, placeholders. Um, so later on, you can pass those values over. All right, um, anything else? Okay, sounds good, sounds good, yeah. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention is, as we know over here, we're dealing with y, uh, y1 through yn, so we have n observations, right? And that's why in the model part, uh, we're writing a loop over here because we're looping through each observation one at a time. Okay. Uh, whereas for the prior, well, we only do it once. So it's not in the loop and it should be outside of the loop altogether. Okay, okay. All right, so with that, um, let me show you the other part of the code that you need to use to, um, to actually run it. So this is the part that I was saying that we're gonna pass the data in as well as the hyperparameter values. So those hyperparameters refers to those mu zero, phi zero, alpha and beta, okay? They are the parameters of the parameters. So we call them hyperparameters. Okay? So those are the priors that we actually gonna use. Uh, so for example, there are multiple ways you can pass it. Uh, for me, we have the list, uh, which is a vector of y. Okay, that's the data set itself. And then we also have n, because uh, if you remember previously, we're writing a loop uh, over over the number of observations. So we need this N as well. And then the rest of it is um, passing everything into how we name it before, but then in this way, specific numbers that we're gonna use. Okay, so I'm using exactly the same prior that we did using um, the Gibbs that we wrote together using, uh, using regular R. And this is uh, using exactly the same thing. So one thing I guess is a little bit tricky and important to remember is that phi, Phi zero, as we know, is one over sigma zero square. Okay, so if you, in this case, we're using a, a normal with mean five and standard deviation one, I think. So you need to pass the phi zero. Okay, you need to kind of do a little bit quick calculation over here because it is one over sigma square. Okay, so if you have a prior hyper prior hyper value of um, hyper prior parameter value of uh, sigma zero, you need to turn it into phi because otherwise it's going to be a mistake. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then you can run the whole thing. Uh, there's this round jacks package, like I said, and the round jacks is the function that we're going to use from that R package. And then it has a few things that we need to specify, and we're going to look at one by one as well what we mean by, by each of them. So the first is the model string. That's the model specification, the density, uh, sampling density, as well as the prior. And we also need the data part. Okay. You need to tell JAX uh, which are the parameters you want to track and monitor. So we're going to track mu and phi because they are the two unknown parameters. So we're going to track both of them. Sometimes you might only want to track one of them. For us, let's just like do both, especially if you remember previously for the Jack, uh, for the Gibbs sampler that we wrote as a whole function, we actually create a matrix, remember? And then storing one column of mu, another column of phi. So we're trying to like match if we're going to see something similar. So the other stuff, which we actually going to talk a little bit more as we go to the MCMC diagnostics, but I do want to tell you what they are early on, and then we can see how we can change those values when you're doing those MCMC diagnostics. So first of all, Markov chain Monte Carlo, you can decide how many different chains you want to run. Okay, uh, We are demonstrating using just running one chain, Okay, but you can run multiple chains and to see if they all converge at the same place. So this is this n dot chains, what that means. And then there are three, uh, four other things um, that we will get to know a little bit more as we um, know why we, we care about the different values. Uh, but overall, when we do all of this, uh, sample is something very important at this point. So this is telling us how many MCMC iterations in the end that I want to save. Okay, so if I want to run it for 5,000 iterations, I want to save all of the 5,000 of them, uh, that is the number you need to decide, okay? The other things I can tell you a little bit more now, uh, later, because I think right now is a little bit too much, uh, but the key at this point is to know, uh, so let me say that again, is to know what parameters you want to save, okay? How many chains you want to run, and then how many iterations you want to run it and save it for. So those are the three main things at this point. The other inputs, we're going to talk about them as we go to the MCMC diagnostics. All right. So uh, remember earlier, we run this and then save it into object composed area. So you can then try to summarize the whole object. So if I try to summarize the whole object just in one command summary, you can see that I remember we save everything about mu and phi, right? So we are looking at summary of mu and phi and all that. So a few things to, to keep in mind. So each row is about a parameter and each column is about a particular, I guess, feature of the parameter. So they return the median for you directly. They return the mean. They return the standard deviation. They also return the mode, but a lot of times it's NA. And they also return a lower 95% and upper 95%. So if you combine those two, that gives you the middle, uh, I think the middle 90, the middle 90% confidence interval, uh, uh, credible interval. And there are a few other things that we will also discuss when we get to the uh, MCMC diagnostics. Okay? But what I want to say is, well, everything is being stored into the posterior object. And then we can do a quick summary. If I want to know the posterior mean, the posterior median, the posterior 90% credible interval, from here, you can already tell everything. Okay. All right. Make sense overall? Okay, should be straightforward. Like I said, after class, uh, definitely uh, try to follow that link to first of all, download and install JAX locally. And also don't forget to do the round JAX uh, package as well. You need to install and uh, load it. And uh, all of the code is in the R markdown file that I posted on Moodle. So you can just open that and then follow over there. That's fine as well. Uh, but the downloading and installing JAX part is something separate, okay? It's not in, within R, so you have to do it separately. Um, but after that, I think you should be able to run the sample code that I provided or any other uh, uh, GIFs that you want to try with JAX. Okay? Okay? All right, sounds good. So let's talk about the MCMC diagnostics. So we'll be able to also discuss the other items in the function. <laughs> 